Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Today I got a little bit of an unboxing to do. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Actually, it's quite a quite a big unboxing. Now I was doing some research uh, online with some of the car audio stuff and the CT Sounds subwoofer that I installed in the Pioneer enclosure was missing some frequencies. It, it just wasn't hitting the right notes. Uh, and looking into it a little bit more and finding out the specs of the CT, was it the CT Sounds uh, D, was it 12D2 or D4, something like that. Going into the specs of it you know, on their website and coming to find out that, uh, well, enclosure size uh, wasn't just quite right for the subwoofer that I was using. So that's part of the reason why I was missing some of the frequencies, uh, not hitting the right notes with certain music. And uh, yeah, I mean, once it hit the resonant frequency of the Pioneer enclosure, man, that thing rattled your eyes, your eyeballs. But uh, it was missing still, and it was missing quite a bit. So I ended up, like I said, going online and finding the, uh, the SCAR Audio enclosure which i will compare specs in a bit now the nice thing about this is they actually put a 12 gauge single line inside of it which i will be running dual voice coils so i'm going to have to beef it up a little bit to what i have for what i'm using the enclosure seems to be pretty nice this is a ported enclosure for 12s and uh again you know scar audio the pioneer TS-A300B is not a bad loaded enclosure if you're looking for just to add some low frequencies to your system. However, at a 500 watt RMS power rating, uh, yeah, it doesn't really handle very well with 500 watts and up. I've noticed that with the system that I have in my vehicle. The driver itself is not a typical subwoofer that you would find uh, in either in most loaded enclosures or just off the shelf in the box. Now, the driver itself doesn't have the excursion, which means that the diaphragm does not excurt past the basket that much at all. So when you're overdriving or driving this thing pretty hard, it sounds like it's being overdriven. It doesn't handle very well. Uh, as far as the basket and magnet goes, it's a typical stamped basket, uh, double stacked magnet, although there is no vented pole piece on the back of the magnet, nor is there any vents around the uh, bottom of the spider to keep the coil cool on this thing. This is a two ohm, uh, basically out the door on the box itself. It's a two ohm rated enclosure. Now. It's four ohms each coil. The way they have it wired makes it into a two ohm system. Two ohms is going to be uh, quite a bit of power, and I don't think this coil can really handle it very well because, uh, you know, driving it the way I was driving it in my vehicle um, under normal circumstances, which is loud. It can't handle it. The coil was heating up and I could start to smell the coil burning on this thing. The terminals, as far as connecting wires to on the subwoofer itself or driver itself, are not the typical subwoofer, you know, push, insert wire, let go terminals. This has small, uh, what you would see on loudspeakers or full driver, full range drivers terminals where you have a larger terminal that is a positive and a smaller terminal that is negative uh, which either you solder to or you use some type of a clipped on the end of your wires to push onto the terminal itself. The spider that is underneath the diaphragm of this is not a double stacked diaphragm or double stacked spider I mean. Um, the spider seems like it's a single layer. Uh, the wire leads that go from the terminals to the 
voice call itself are basically free floating they're not woven in like a normal subwoofer would be into the spider which means that in time the leads could come disconnected from the back of the cone because of use and either you'll be left with one cone one coil or no coil at all now the enclosure on this is a decent enclosure it's tuned pretty well for the driver giving you uh, a very wide range of frequencies so you're not really missing out on the range of listening to different types of music uh, however uh, the enclosure is not made uh, typically like a normal subwoofer enclosure would be so normal subwoofer baffle which is the front panel should be a three inch thick three eighths thickness uh this is not the whole enclosure is built out of uh particle board uh one fourth thickness all the way around and usually um you know not particle board usually you use mdf particle board works mdf is what you're supposed to use my thoughts of the Pioneer subwoofer system, well, 500 watts RMS, no, I would say 400 watts to maybe 450 might be pushing it too much RMS. Uh, as far as frequency response goes, uh, there is a very wide range of frequencies that this will produce, low frequencies, uh, pretty good, but better at low volumes. The enclosure itself is basically made for a hatchback or a SUV type vehicle. As far as being placed inside of a trunk, again, heat could be an issue with the voice coil. Uh, you know, it gets very hot inside of a trunk. Also, I don't know exactly how this driver is going to perform in an enclosed area. Like if you're really going to be able to hear it up front in the cabin area of the vehicle being placed in a trunk. All right, CT sounds. 12 d4 650 watts dual vo 4 ohm voice coil uh, this thing is a little bit of a beast it has a very high rolled surround where the driver can excurt uh, way beyond the basket itself uh, which means that it can also handle being pushed a lot harder than the pioneer driver can take as you see on the side, it has the push terminals for the uh, wires. It's got a double stacked magnet and a stamped basket as well, but it also gives you the cooling options of keeping your coil cool when it's being driven hard. You have a vented pole piece at the back of the magnet, and you also have vents on the side of the basket between the spider and the magnet. The spider on this thing is a double layered spider, and the terminal wires are basically woven into the spider itself, giving this subwoofer more life uh, in the long run and being able to be driven hard without having any problems of disconnecting from the coil itself. However, all subwoofers are not created equally when it comes to enclosures. The Pioneer enclosure, um, after doing some measurements, it seems to be a, uh, a foot and a half cubic foot uh, as far as the volume of the internal volume of the enclosure goes with a I want to say 40 hertz tuned port that is on the Pioneer enclosure which is good for the Pioneer driver that is inside of it but not so good for the CT Sounds 12 that I have in it now. So I went to CT Sounds website and purchased the single 12 inch ported box enclosure blueprints and as you can see that it's recommended at a volume of two foot cubic feet at a port tuned to 32 hertz which is not that much of a big deal but mdf is kind of unavailable right now at a lot of the local hardware stores uh, around this area so building an enclosure is going to be on hold but this gives me an idea of what I need as far as an enclosure goes. Now, the specs for the 12D4 says that it needs a 1.75 cubic foot uh, enclosure tuned port to 32 hertz. So, hunting around, 
for a quality enclosure, which is kind of hard to do because a lot of enclosures are made cheaply and uh, they're not uh, actually tuned correctly as well. But hunting around and I found Scar Audio's 12 inch uh, empty enclosure and purchased that. All right, so we have the Scar Audio single 12 inch ported enclosure and you can see that it has an internal volume space of two cubic foot and the port is tuned to 34 hertz which is not that much of a big deal considering that the subwoofer actually requires a 32 hertz tuned port so this is not going to be too far off now the inside of the enclosure has what's called polyfill on there and that kind of helps with the uh, tricking the driver thinking that the enclosure is a lot larger than what it is. Now if I remove some of the polyfill I can basically get where I need to be as far as uh, being a 1.75 cubic foot enclosure. Now the port tuning there's really not much I can do to with that. Um, you can't really stuff anything or change the size of the port um, considering that it's made out of MDF and not being a tube. If it was a tube port uh, I can actually change the tuning of that port by the diameter or the length of the tube uh, that is creating the port itself. So but anyways this should work out pretty damn good as far as giving me the frequencies that I'm looking for with basically any type of music. The power handling as far as the 568 or 586 watts, I can't remember exactly what it was, um, into a 650 watt driver without having any problems with being overdriven and distortion. It should work out, should work out perfect. Uh, now this is a rule that basically uh, has been going on with car audio ever since I got into car audio back when I was 19 years old I believe and started reading up and I, got, I had the book and I had the videotape basically a VHS tape of inst car audio installations for back in the time now things have changed a lot but the rule has pretty much uh, stayed the same so this is the rule of thumb when matching up a amplifier with any type of a driver let alone being a subwoofer or a full range driver 